Hello, everyone. Welcome to this very special Tuesday as we get ready for Thanksgiving. Today, we're going to be talking about my very favorite subject. And why is it my favorite subject? It's my favorite subject because it changed my life. And I have a feeling that it might change yours as well. As a matter of fact, we're going to be talking about how I know that it can change your life. If you'll just tweak your life a little bit. And so today we're going to be talking about gratitude. And because it's Thanksgiving, I thought that was going to be a really, really great time to talk about this. But more importantly, if you're not watching this just before Thanksgiving, it's something that you can and should live all year long. So uh, my name is Vicki Townsend. I'm the founder of the Cafe D and I founded this because I needed a space like this when I was going through my divorce. I needed a place where there was a community of like-minded people that were maybe going through the same things that I was going through that could kind of support me through it as I was kind of waking up and shaking off the fog and the anger and the, the bitterness. And I also wanted a, a place that provided me with some experts. So at the Cafe D, we have legal, we have accounting, we have financial management, we have mental health counselors and gosh, real estate agents, insurance, mortgage, all of those things that go into uh, the divorce process. But we also have coaching available for you. So if this is something that you feel like you need, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to be talking about gratitude because it's something that absolutely changed my life. And it's so important to me because I know it can change yours. How do I know that? Because there is a bucket load of research, brain research on the impact of gratitude on your life and today that's what we're going to be talking about because it's not just me talking and you've probably heard a lot about gratitude and gratitude is kind of the, the word these days but what I'm here to tell you about is that gratitude really works it really does change your brain so we're going to be talking about some studies there's quite a few of them out there I've kind of called all of that at the end of this webinar. I'm also going to give you uh, maybe some books that you want to check out and um, some ideas on how you can start your gratitude journey. And I promise you, it will help you just like it helped me. I was angry and bitter. I was sad and lonely and depressed. And by doing what we're going to be talking about today, just a little tweak, it's turned me into happy, joyous, and here to help you because it makes me happy. So I've prepared a little bit of a, a presentation for you today to just kind of talk and give you some visualization as to how and why this works. And hopefully we'll give you some resources so that you can further your own journey. So with that, I am going to share my screen with you. If you would just please be patient with me while I get myself together and we'll be bringing you the absolute presentation on gratitude. It's not for Thanksgiving anymore. It is for all year long. And I hope that what I'm, um, we're talking about here today really impacts you on the scientific level of this conversation because there really is brain science behind this. There's been neurological studies and that's what we're gonna be talking about today how this actually impacts how your brain functions because your brain wants it. Gratitude, particularly if practiced regularly, can help you be healthier and happier. And that's what we're going to be talking about. You know, my own divorce was something that I, I, I was in a downward spiral, for lack of a better word. I really and truly was in this downward spiral. I couldn't get myself out of it. And it wasn't until I made a shift in my habits and I was able to do something that really made my brain feel good. And then my brain wanted more of that. And that's what we're here today. So I want to talk to you about a couple of studies. One study by a couple of American researchers, they assigned young adults to keep a daily journal of things they were grateful for. And they assigned another group 
they needed to journal about the things that just kind of bugged them, really, really annoyed them. You know, all of the stuff in their day that just kind of just was getting in their way of happiness. And they also were asked to journal about why they were better off than others. And this was amazing, amazing, amazing research because the young adults that were assigned to keep the gratitude journals showed greater increases in determination, in attention, in enthusiasm, and energy compared to the other groups. While that shows, you know, there's a, there's a super benefit to gratitude, it also makes a very, very clear distinction. So the other people that were doing that, uh, that journaling about how they were uh, better off than others, that is not gratitude. Gratitude requires an appreciation for all of those wonderful things about what's going on in your life. So it's not a comparison. And sometimes noticing what other people don't have may help you see what you can be grateful for. But you have to take that next step. You actually have to show appreciation for what you have for it to have an effect. So what does that mean? That means that gratitude actually makes you uh, happier, enthusiastic, and energetic. And gratitude improves your optimism. Isn't that, op is it, I mean, isn't that really what we want? I want to be optimistic. I don't know about you. But, you know, they also conducted a, uh, an, another study that showed that, you know, even a weekly gratitude journal was beneficial. I kept, when I first started my gratitude journal, oh gosh, I, I wasn't as consistent at it as I should have been. But even doing it every few days, I was probably doing it maybe every, on the weekends. Let's just say I was doing it on the weekends. But even that, my brain noticed a great, greater improvement in my optimism. I started to feel better. And, you know, that makes sense. You know, it's, but that's not all. It also influenced my behavior and it influ influenced the other people in this study's behavior. Keeping a gratitude journal also caused greater improvements in exercise patterns. So how great would that be? Who wants to feel good about actually going and taking a yoga class or getting to the gym or going for a brisk walk or even just doing a video in your own home, an exercise video, because you'll be excited about the, the thought of taking care of yourself. And lastly, it also caused a reduction in physical ailments. So you know those you know, aches and pains that you have or you know that, that carpal tunnel syndrome? Be grateful that you just don't have a headache. I mean, there's ways that you can turn little things into really great things. And in another study, a group of Chinese researchers looked at the combined effects of gratitude and sleep quality on symptoms of anxiety and depression. They found that higher levels of gratitude were associated with better sleep, and who doesn't want to sleep better? I don't know about you, but when I was going through what I was going through, I really, I, I was challenged with having a good night's sleep. I don't know if that's you, if that, if that resonates with you, please continue with this, because this is so important. The, you know, the, they found that the higher levels of gratitude were associated with better sleep, with lower anxiety and depression. So, you know, it begs kind of the question, is the level of gratitude improving these symptoms or is it the fact that the patients were getting better sleep? So the researchers ran some analysis and they did a, con a control study for the amount of sleep and revealed a few really interesting uh, links. They found that after controlling for the amount of sleep people got, gratitude still had an effect on lower depression scores. This means that regardless of the, like, you know, your levels of insomnia, people who showed more gratitude were less depressed. With anxiety, they found a different result. After controlling for you know, sleep, gratitude showed no effect on anxiety. So while higher gratitude led to less anxiety originally, it was simply because the people were sleeping better and sleeping better improves anxiety. So gratitude kind of has a direct effect on depression and an indirect effect on anxiety. 
So increased gratitude led to improved sleep, which led to lower anxiety. But either way, gratitude with gratitude, you're better off when you get a good night's sleep. And I have to say that getting a good night's sleep is like, uh, it's like nirvana for me. And I just, I wake up feeling like I'm a better, happier person. So consider gratitude for your sleep as well. The NIH researchers examined blood flow to various brain regions while subjects summoned up feelings of gratitude and thankfulness. They found that subjects who showed more gratitude overall had higher level of activity in what's called the hypothalamus. This is super important because the hypothalamus controls such a huge range of essential body functions, including like eating, sleeping, drinking. You know, it has a huge influence on your metabolism and your stress levels. From this evidence on brain activity, it starts to become clear how improvements in gratitude could have such a wide-ranging effects from increased exercise, which we saw before in the other study, improved sleep from that Chinese study to decrease depression and fewer aches and pains. I mean, think about all of that that goes on in your body and how just having gratitude in your life can impact so much of your, of your brain matter that controls things that you don't even think about. So... Have you ever heard of like Wellbutrin? Um, it's an antidepressant. Um, have you ever heard of like Prozac? Those boost neurotransmitters, do dopamine and serotonin. And those are those feel good chemicals that your body needs. And that's your brain's way, way of saying, oh my gosh, do that again. And boy, does that feel good because you see your brain looks for things that it already agrees with and looks for more of that. So when you are producing dopamine and serotonin by with this gratitude journal, right? That is your, your brain's way of saying, let's look for more of that. So suddenly when you're keeping your gratitude journal, just the fact that you're looking for something to be grateful for at the beginning of your gratitude journal, and journaling and, and journey, because you're looking for it at the beginning and your brain says, boy, that is so awesome, I love this feeling, your brain is going to start looking for more of those things to improve the dopamine and serotonin because it feels so good. Does this make sense for you? I hope it does. You know, it, it's something that I wish that I had had you know, really, really early on. I was probably about two years into my divorce process and separation where I really got a hold of this and really started to make a difference in my life. So my, my hope for you is that as you go through your own gratitude journal, that you will begin to see things on the bright side and understand how looking for those positive things, I don't care if it's just a beautiful flower that you see on your walk in the morning or the fresh air or the blue skies or even the dark skies. My goodness gracious, the dark cloud waters that beautiful grass and creates those beautiful flowers that you see. You can be grateful for your children, I don't know, your pets. You can be grateful that for your health anything that you can find. And as you go on and enter that into your journal each morning or each evening, you can absolutely have that dopamine and serotonin rush into your body. So there's a few things that I want you to know, and that's really important, is that gratitude takes practice. Like I said, your brain is gonna start to look for things that make it feel good because that's the reward center of your brain that gratitude works on. So every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day. You can find something beautiful to be thankful for every day. Wake up and take notes or make notes about it. Continue with looking for things to be grateful for. And these are a couple of books that I want you guys to take note of and maybe even consider uh, reading. These are great books. I've read them both. The first is called The Happiness Advantage. That's by a guy named Sean Acor. He was 
a former um, Harvard uh, professor. And he actually did a study. Um, and in the Harvard Review, he states that you are 37% better at sales when you practice gratitude. Another additional, you know, gratitude research shows, you know, it elevates your IQ, it enhances your creativity, it increases your resilience, it deepens your relationships, it makes you more productive, it builds more social capital, and so much more. That's all in that book, and I highly, highly recommend it to you. The Upward Spiral is a neuroscientist's actual brain scans of the actual effects on your brain that being grateful causes. It's wonderful. Both of these books together can absolutely change your life. And I promise you that as you practice gratitude, it will come easier and easier to you. It will be a uh, a wonderful addition to your morning or your evening ritual and that's where this leads me to what you will need and that is your own form of a journal I did get something like this in this picture that you see here a beautiful leather bound journal but it doesn't have to be that you don't have to have a fancy journal you can have a legal pad you can do it on a napkin you can even do it in your own mind as you're wait as you're walking in the morning as you're ending your day. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just has to be because the act of gratitude will give you that brain rush and it will change your life because the more you practice it, the more you will create what, what the gentleman from the, the Upward Spiral book calls is that upward spiral. Instead of the downward spiral that we've been living in after our divorce, this gives you an opportunity to go everywhere and up. So I welcome you to go out and find a journal that will work for you. I actually have about four or five of them now. I keep one in my purse. I keep one in my nightstand. Right now, there's one on my kitchen table. Um, I write wherever I am. If I'm walking my dogs, I make mental notes to myself as we're walking by the river how beautiful the water is how magnificent this walk is. Today, the weather, the weather is so beautiful. I'm just so grateful for the beautiful temperatures. And it's constantly tweaking my conversations with myself that brings me up, spiraling up, increasing my serotonin, my dopamine, and making me a happy and more joyous person. And that gives me the way I live in gratitude to say thanks. I'd like to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, but remember that you don't need Thanksgiving to show thanks, and I hope that you will continue to do your own research with your own uh, gratitude journey, and if you'll let us know at the Cafe D, go onto our Facebook page, let us know how your gratitude journal is working out for you. It's not going to be something that you feel right away, but I promise you it is a it is the best way to live. And when you're grateful for everything, your happiness will show. And I hope that you will enjoy this beautiful, beautiful holiday season. If you're watching this and it's not Thanksgiving, I want to say you are awesome for creating this journey in your life right now, whatever month, whatever day this is. I look forward to seeing you on more Tuesdays as we bring you information on how you can be inspired and motivated to go beyond a life-changing event like divorce. So thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to join us in membership and, and find some other people that are going on a similar journey, please consider joining us at www.thecafed.com. And I look forward to sharing more Tuesdays and Divorce Rx webinars with you. And I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day, everyone. And we will see you on the other side. Bye-bye for now.